episode of Your Brain on Hops. We have a local episode today featuring a, well, a very local brewery for all of us here. And with me, as always, I have... Alex. Dan. So that local brewery is 42 North. Hometown. So, hometown. Oh, yeah. Oh, very hometown. East Aurora, New York. A hometown for some of us. Hometown adjacent for others, but very, very local. Uh, located on Pine Street here in East Aurora. So uh, right in uh, bustling downtown East Aurora. It is bustling. It is bustling. Right behind uh, Fiddlers. <laughs> the, um, the first beer we have is the Wallonia Wit from them. And actually, I'm going to let Alex introduce this beer because Alex is actually a part-time bartender there. Uh, started that up. So, Alex, now tell us about the Wallonia Wit. That's a pretty standard Belgian wit. Um, 40% wheat. Uh, they use orange peel and coriander in it. It's very light and refreshing and delicious. It is delicious. One of the things that I first got, which I really like on it, is it has a spicy nose. Mm -hmm. Which, not all wits... Wits can go a couple different ways for me. They can be either a little bit more bland, or they could be a little bit spicy as well. So... It's kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of a hit or miss for me. The, the, a lot of wits go a little bit too bland, in my honest opinion. Um, I know they're trying to be a little bit lighter, go for the summer, but I like it right in the nose. This was spicy, and like you said, the, the coriander, the orange peel, you get that citrus mm -hmm. bit in there, and I, I, I appreciate that in the beer. Yeah, I get a lot of, um, not just the orange, but I get I get lemon. Yeah, I was going to say lemon. I get a lot more lemon on okay. this, and I get more of that sweetness that you get with oranges. A little more tartness. Well, I don't know if it's maybe it's probably zest. I'm assuming that I'm getting it. Possibly even a little bitterness from possibly just leftover pith or something along that lines. You can pick up from it. Yeah, all I know is that it's orange peel. <laughs> I haven't been. Well, in... it's orange. That's so it doesn't matter what I think. <laughs> Next time they're brewing, are you just gonna be like? I'm just going to stand here and watch you. I'm so curious about this beer now. What are you See, putting really in here? someone is just throwing in one whole lemon. I'm like, I'll never know. Hey, Alex, watch the door. We're going to add secret lemon. Um, one of the cool things about uh, this beer is it's a great summer beer, and I'm really looking forward to spending summer at 42 North. Uh, I didn't really get a chance last year that much to enjoy the nice outdoor area they have. When did um, they officially they, open? I think it was... Was it just, like, right before winter? About yeah. like six fall? months ago now, I believe. There was a little bit of a period where you could have been outside. Or if you're just, like, a really brave Western New Yorker, I suppose you could have gone outside at any given time. You know, negative 30 degrees or whatever. Right, but now that it's starting to warm up, yeah, um, we are seeing quite a few people going out there, especially once the uh, uh, that massive fire pit is all heated up. Uh, that's a sweet beautiful. fire pit. Yeah, it's nice out there. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah, I have to keep Dan from throwing shit in the fire pit. Whoa, whoa. No, no, no. I do not throw shit in the fire pit. <laughs> in fact, I take things out of the fire pit like the hot coals, <laughs> and I play with it, and I juggle them. <laughs> I stand corrected. I have to keep Dan from taking shit out of the fire pit. <laughs> from not playing the fire. Burning the place down. <laughs> burning the place down. <laughs> it's just lava rock. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he, he manages lava rock quite well, so he puts it back when he's done. I'm juggling my rocks. After yeah, after he's done juggling the <laughs> the white hot coal rocks. Well, thanks for putting our rocks back. <laughs> Anytime, Alex. <laughs> so uh, so Alex, how's it been bartending there so far? Uh, very good. I'm I'm really enjoying my time behind the bar. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, this is uh this is a beer I pour quite a bit of. Hmm. Um, it seems to be a... Is this the most popular one? I mean, not officially or anything, but you poured a lot. Um, I pour this and the Borderland IPA quite a bit, hmm. uh, along with, I'd say, the uh, Porter, the Asylum Porter, which we'll have coming up, um, along with the Nitro version of it. And uh, for the light beer drinkers that come in and say that that's all they really drink, um, I always give them our New York Mild which is an English mild ale uh, brewed with all New York State ingredients. That's, that's, that's exactly what it is. It is mild. It is mild. It is. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, and it's um, the I, the nitro really brings up that body and really smooths it out yeah. and makes gives it a more substantial mouthfeel. 
Um, you guys also have a red, don't you? Yes, that just was tapped, I believe, maybe last week or the week before. It's called Red Jacket. Yeah, that's, that's a solid one. With the red, there's another one. Is it Red Army? No. Red Army, yeah, yes. Red Army, that, but was, that was bottle only. Yeah, that was a bottle. Well, we had it on tap for a little bit. That was before I started working there. But um, it, we do still have a few bottles of it left over. That was the Russian Imperial Stout. I need to get one of those. I guess <laughs> <Russian. laughs> I like how you remember the red part of it. It's like communism. Hey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Russian Russian communism is that ingrained. It's a uh, it's a Russian imperial style, but you remember red. <laughs> well, the reason being is when we were when we were there last week, uh, I was trying to figure out what to get, and one of the bartenders was trying to make suggestions, and I found I was like, you know what? Uh, give me the red army. He's like, you want a bottle of the style? I was like, no, I want the red ale. And he's like, that's the red jacket, and I'm like, well. <laughs> Whatever, red. It, it, it's all I could remember. Okay, just that one. I don't. He's like, okay, because I thought you wanted a bottle. I was like, if you're willing to give me the bottle, fine, I'll take that too. <laughs> Let me put it this way: I will not say no to a beer that you offer me. No. I'm an easy, cheap date. <laughs> Good for you. Here, have a beer. Oh, well, don't mind if I do. <laughs> yeah, um, forty-two was actually mentioned in an article I saw recently. Um, it was from the Buffalo Niagara Brewers Association, which it, well, it was later in April, um, and it was about Pilsners, which they have a great Pilsner at 42. Um, I don't, do they have a couple or just the one? Just the one. Just Illumination. The one. Yeah. Bohemian Pilsner. Yeah. Yeah, that one actually, uh, I, I wasn't traditionally a fan of Bohemian Pilsners, but... That, that one was pretty solid. But this article is about Pilsners and how... kind of relates to our last episode when Greg was on. And we were talking about how um, the next style in craft beer that's going to be big is going to be lagers or Pilsners in particular. Because it hits a couple markets. One, you get people who aren't that into craft beer. And Pilsners especially uh, can... They're easy to make lower ABV. So you can have a 5% Pilsner that still tastes like a pretty good Pilsner. So they kind of get that uh, that low ABV market that session IPAs are going after, um, but in any case, this was about pilsners in Buffalo and how a bunch of different Buffalo breweries are coming out with some really good pilsners. And the feature one was Forty Two North's uh, Pilsner. It's a really solid beer. It's it's done very well. The recipe actually came from Czech Republic. Did they? kill a check to get it? <laughs> what, what happened? Many. <laughs> you didn't hear about the skirmishes in western Czechoslovakia? Huh. Well, that's that's good that it came from the old country then. Yeah. Um, I believe it is brewed with all um, Czech ingredients as well. Um, I know Czech the, size hops? Yeah, Czech size um, are the hops that we use in it. Besides that, Pilsner malt... I'm not exactly sure. No, 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 this is no, no, no. Because according to the brewery, the best European malts available. That's a bold statement, my friend. I trust what the website says. <laughs> I trust them. <laughs> After tasting well, it, sure. Actually, sure. the they brewer, use the, they use the best ones around. Their brewer is currently, right now, gallivanting across Europe, gypsy brewing. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Where is he, Dan? What country is he in? I actually don't know what country he's uh, in right uh, now. <laughs> That's a good question. I just know he's gallivanting across. <laughs> My guess would be he's in Belgium somewhere. Yeah. Good country, Belgium. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they all right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a fun... uh should set up like an app or something. Where are you gypsy brewing today? <laughs> Log in. Oh, neat. <laughs> of course, if he's in Belgium, I'd have no idea where where it was. Let's use Encantion. I suppose I'd recognize that location, but probably be the only one. It'd probably be the only one. That's a fair. That's a fair <laughs> assessment. All right. Well, let's pour the other beer that we have here. Uh, we have Asylum Robust Porter up next. As I said, what the fuck am I drinking? <laughs> we, we, excellent question, <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> um, just to reiterate, Asylum Robust Porter, uh, named after the famous Buffalo Asylum, who which have you ever been in there? Uh, the history I know nothing about. I know there is an asylum associated with Buffalo. And that's the extent of my knowledge. Same here. But uh, the beer, the beer is delicious. It is. It's nice and roasty. You get a lot of, I get a lot of coffee in it. Yeah. I get a lot of coffee. I get a lot of uh, get chocolate, too. Oh, uh, really? I get caramel. 
Caramel, really? Yeah. Hmm. There's a little bit of sweetness hmm. at the very end. Um, possibly like a burnt, like a little burnt caramel, like, you know, sugar Almost taste. toffee. Yeah, like. toffee. Interesting. I agree hmm. with everything, except I'd replace it with cho- like a burnt chocolate flavor. Instead of uh, caramel or See, toffee. I don't get chocolate at all. I get huh. coffee, I get toffee. Interesting. Well, if you're in Western New York, come taste the porter. Let us know if it tastes more like coffee or or, to- or chocolate or toffee. And then let us know. To me, I get coffee and toffee. Which is odd because I've had this and the nitro version of it. It's the exact same beer, just one is on nitro. And I get more chocolate in the nitro. Hmm. I can see that. And it's really fun to be behind the bar and someone asks me, like, oh, so what's the difference between the nitro porter and the and the asylum porter? And I'm, I tell them the difference between nitro, and then they're like, huh, okay. And so I literally just grab two tasting glasses and give them a little sample of both, right. and you can just see it the second they sip both of them, mind blown. <laughs> they're just like, wow. It's amazing like, what nitro will do to a yeah. beer. But I'm still not a fan of the nitro yet. Nitro. Really? The only I'm a huge fan of nitro. <sighs> the only thing I've ever loved nitro for has been Guinness. It's smoothing something sure. out that of uh, you know a profile. But when it co- when it started getting popular with like the IPAs and everything like that, and giving it that creaminess, it still hasn't grabbed me. And it's just because I'm so used to that West Coast Vermont hop characteristic, and I'm like, I want something a little more aggressive, a little scratchy. I'm like, I don't want you to smooth this out. That ruins it for me. And that, that's fair. Uh, I, for IPAs, I can definitely yeah. see that. Nitro IPAs, I'm still ambivalent about. Some of them, I think, work. Some don't. But I, I, I get that. But, but as you far as stouts. darker beers, yeah, stouts, porters, I'm a huge fan of nitro versions of those. I'll say it. You can give me a Guinness on Nitro. Perfectly poured Guinness is one of the most delicious things ever. I'm but, I'm a fan. And, of, I'm a huge fan of but, Guinness. Although it is difficult to find a perfectly poured Guinness. Uh, where did I just? It's it, the most upsetting is when the bartender, uh, like pour like t- tips the glass a little bit, puts the Nitro right against the glass, and then apologizes for the head on it. Like I'm sorry. Uh-huh. I'm usually better pourer than this and. And I don't know if I if I should instruct them about how to pour a Guinness and that you, that head is you fill it like, up, let it f- settle, and yeah. then you hit it again, and then you let it set, and you hit you reverse the. But tap. it's just <laughs> it, it's just very upsetting when when. But when, I will when I tell don't. you where, and you skipped out on me. Um, I was at the Sportsman's. Not me. You did. I, I, I know. We I went to go see a band with some friends, and. I was there, and the first beer I ordered was a Guinness, and they had the proper tall Guinness glass, and it was a perfectly poured, creamy head, filled properly, and I was like, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, That's to watch that cascading. That is impressive. Oh, the cascading of the nitro, that's that's, that's beautiful. That darkness to light brown to just that creamy white head. Listeners out there, if you haven't had a nitro beer or you haven't had one poured properly... Just you seek, seek out a place, yeah. Sip and it leaves that creamy white head mustache, like a properly poured glass of milk. <laughs> That's right. Pro- how do you milk mustache? How do you properly? Pour <laughs> <a glass laughs> just shut up, let go. You couldn't let it go, could you? You just couldn't. I know what I said. I was, I was, per- I was hoping you'd let it go, but no. <laughs> I was perfectly prepared to let it go, but I'm glad you caught on it. Nah, <laughs> not me. <laughs> That's- after after the episode, we'll go over how to perfectly pour it. I will show you how. I will lay out some delicious Check co- out our Facebook cookies. Post. Check out our <laughs> post a video with a, a nice head on the middle. Check. You, you, now you, you do realize I have to go home. You think it a straw sure. blow bubbles into it? <gasps> you do realize now I have to go home, blow bubbles into a glass of milk, and actually oh, yeah. perfectly pour it out and put it on my Instagram account. I mean, I'm perfectly curious to see it. <laughs> I'll do it nitro style. I'll just flip the milk jug upside down. (laughs) Watch it go all over the floor. Our Instagram is Brain on Hops. (laughs) View it later to see Dan's messes, apparently. (laughs) And a perfectly poured glass of milk. New segment, Dan's messes. (laughs) We could have a segment for Dan's messes. No, sometimes you just go somewhere and I'm like... 
that fucker's making a mess right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> doesn't no. happen at all. Speaking, <laughs> speaking of forty two North. <laughs> we were speaking of we were talking, forty two North. We're talking about milk. <laughs> Okay, guys, I got my eye on the prize. We're talking about 42 North. <laughs> Good transition. Good transition. No, I was thinking of Dan going away for long periods of time. And oftentimes, we'd be like, guys... fucking right Oftentimes, he's like, guys, I'm going to the bathroom. We're like, okay. And fifth, 15 minutes later, he comes back. We're like... Worst segue was, ever. Was that a nice do stand? And he's like, what are you talking about? I've been doing art for the past 15 minutes. They have a, they have a chalkboard at 42 North in the bathroom. And every time we go, Dan always tags, you're brain on hops. And I give him credit for that. It's uh, for the remainder of that night, before that chalkboard is erased, we have awesome advertising at 42 North Brewery. This is very true. Yeah. Yeah, well, here's uh, here's a Dan's uh, uh, art bathroom you, art. You can see some of these posts on our Instagram if you follow us, Brandon Hops at Instagram.com. But yeah, I, they have I have gone into that bathroom at Forty Two North and I have disappeared for a good like fifteen minutes, just drawing out logos. And if there's a blank wall or a blank space, and you just leave a bucket of chalk, and there's no one <laughs> in that restroom that I'm bothering. I'll go to town and make a mural of advertisements. Don't and know you if, have. Don't and, have. And, yeah. I don't know. I thought know. he fell in. I, <laughs> well, those keg urinals, it's real kind of hard, but hey, you know. Um, it's like a seat. <laughs> I just sit in you the keg. Have you ever sat in a keg before? Uh, no. I just sit in the keg. I, that's why I said I it's like a seat. And it's not a seat. <laughs> But yeah, I don't even know if you know the guys are mad that I do that, or they're like, yeah, he just draws all over the boards and just no one else can do it. It's like you can erase my shit. I don't give a crap. I'll just come back and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a bucket of chalk. There's a chalkboard. Which is gonna happen? Not the first time I've done that in Honestly? a bathroom. It's the the whole. F- it started at um. <laughs> yeah, I know weird segments, but <laughs> was there a chalkboard in the other bathroom? Yes. yes oh, was. oh okay. this, it started actually out in Baltimore at a place called Nacho Mama's. And it was <laughs> very <laughs> great name for a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> but so they had do they serve hot dogs. Okay, so they, but they had a they had a, their entire door done in chalkboard paint. But the other thing that they had done was their entire ceiling. <gasps> that must have been like Christmas for you so, if, if you celebrated Christmas. But the hard part was is the fact that you're talking about <laughs> yeah. yeah. The hard part was the fact that that bathroom was a single person use bathroom only. So you only have a certain amount of time mm. to get in there and do whatever marking yeah. you want to do. You don't want to be the asshole hog in the bathroom. Oh, I hog that bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I stand corrected. Listen, I'm in a Mexican restaurant. You don't know what's going on in there. <laughs> I'm drunk on tequila. I've had way too much meat and cheese. Who knows? But. Worst opening of a story ever. <laughs> but needless to say, the door, I it was, uh, I think the Sabres were trying to get into the playoffs. And being in Baltimore, of course, for some reason, I took the entire door and I drew out the entire Buffalo Sabres logo with Let's Go Buffalo on the entire thing. Oh, there you yes. go. The other half, I tried to throw the Bills logo up by climbing on top of the toilet and pretty much going completely Leonardo da Vinci and started to do a mural on the ceiling. I was in there for probably a good solid 20 minutes, and I finally just heard... I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> Without falling into the toilet, and I'm like, turn on the sink. Make sure they think I wash my hands. When this entire time, I'm just drawing. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So you never washed your hands? No, I That's did. You got no, That's story. what I got. <laughs> but you didn't is. wash your hands. But he pretended to wash his no, hands. No, the key is I never actually went in there to use the bathroom. I just wanted to draw. <laughs> I was just taking up space and time. <laughs> Somebody's outside probably pissing their pants, embarrassed on a date. Exactly. <laughs> just bathroom. doing the pee pee dance. It's like, what is he doing in there? And meanwhile, I'm just laying back on scaffolding with chalk to dry. I'm uh, crazy going, art. whistle going on. And... <laughs> this is what happens when you drink three hubcap margaritas and you realize oh, I can draw on the walls. No, no, no. <laughs> that will happen. I'm kind of sad you didn't say that you were drinking beer, of course. Wait, wait, was there craft beer at this place or was it like. 
Just Coronas big, and stuff like the that. The big thing is uh, beer there. Uh, what is it? Natty Bow. Which is pretty much the equivalent so of... So just their... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Their, I mean, you're at a Mexican... Lowbrow, lo- local... Yeah, lo- local Coronas and... Eastern area, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the equivalent of, like, blue. Yeah. There. Okay. Honestly, anytime I, I go out for Mexican, I get a margarita. Really? I don't care if they have a good draft beer selection I've or gotten, anything like that. If I, it, I love margaritas. So. I'm, I'm not saying it's wrong, and I've done that too, but if they have a good draft selection and they have some solid IPAs, a lot of times I get an IPA... How about that heat of what I'm... Because I, 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 I normally get heat. hot. I like spicy food. Yeah. So uh, I'll go with that route. But if they don't, then yes. I'd and rather do margarita than like the local macro brew. But you and I have both... Chris and I have both been to Baltimore, and they do have possibly one of the coolest beer bars, and that's called Max's. Max's? Oh, I've been there. I fucking love Max's. Um, You've been there too? Yeah, I went to... I actually spent... Four weeks in a row, for pretty much a whole month in Baltimore, the Inner oh, Harbor. Oh wow! Harbor. Yeah, for work. I'm I'm jealous of that. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> they by the end of that time, they knew me at Max's because <laughs> that's where I spent most what? of They've the got, time. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> I forgot like twelve hundred taps, twelve casks. No, sorry, twelve hundred. <laughs> no, twelve hundred bottle lists, hundred taps, twelve casks, yep. and two floors, and it's just. Yeah. Non-stop, and you get that list. And I think the first time I went there, I should the guy just let me keep the glass, and I'm just like, I don't, I don't know what to have next. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a <laughs> scroll. Just, just start, you know, just start at the top and just keep marking them down, and they'll see how long it takes me to not fall off my stool and pass out. <laughs> I remember when I went, uh, I was trying to order the even more Jesus from Evil Twin. Um, but I, I, I was really big into Top Gear at the time. Still am. I can't wait to, for the Amazon, new Amazon show. But anyway, I was really big into Top Gear. And when I went up, I, I ordered, can I get an even more Baby Jesus? The Baby Jesus. <laughs> the Baby Jesus, as Jeremy Clarkson is, is fond of saying. And the guy stared at me. He's like, I know what you want. And I know what that's from. Good job. <laughs> and then he got me the even more Jesus. Here's your baby Jesus. <laughs> Speed! <laughs> but uh, that, the cool thing is, is I'm hoping, is that uh, down the line, we uh, have a friend out there, and uh, he's got a couple connections to some breweries, and uh, we hope to possibly do a show out of Baltimore. Shout out Tim. Shout out Tim. Hashtag shout out Tim. <laughs> Here we go. Hashtag shout out Tim. So I hope to. I look yeah. forward to that. And if hey, one of those stops is Max's or Nacho Mama's, I will be drawing and I will be drinking and I will be having fun. Yeah, one of our future Your Brain on Location episodes will be from Baltimore. But before we take our brains on location, let's go back to our local brewery here today. Uh, we just poured our next beer here, which is a delicious beer. Uh, we have the White Oak Borderland IPA, a variation of. I don't know if it's a flagship, but certainly a popular beer at 42 North. I would say it's one of our flagships. The Borderland IPA? The Borderland yeah. IPA, yeah. And this variation of it, this White Oak. This, I mean, even though we're home, this this beer takes me away. Because this beer, it that tropical, it's so good. It, this is by far my favorite beer on their tap list at 42 North. It's yeah. got that citrus pineapple characteristic that I love and it's sm- it's creamy and it's got a, almost just a slight hint of vanilla and it, it, it just, I loved this beer when oh, I first had it. Oh, there it is. Yeah. No, I I was recognizing the v- vanilla but I couldn't place it yet, but you're um, right. When they first did It's just this, a hint though. It's not It's just a small hint, but it was just enough and when they first I uh, one of the brewers and owners he told me what was going on. He's like, "Hey, you want to try this?" And he's like, "Yeah, it's the last of it handed it to me." And I'm like, wait, what do you mean the last one? He's like, well, we're making more. We just don't have it yet. I'm like, you can't do this to me. You can't give me a glass like this and just like take it away. You can't give me a, my first hit and be like, you want more? You want, Come here. Come here, I'm just going to dangle this in front of you. How dare you? <laughs> so once I came back, I, I just remember going back. I'm like, that's all I want to drink. That's Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I've, well, don't I- you want to try anything else? Not really. <laughs> and, and I've gone with you there before, and we, we do like trying new beers, um, especially for checking into Untapped, just trying out new oh, stuff. But we'll go back there, and I'll be like, oh, that's new, I'll have that. And, and you're like, that is new, and I haven't had it yet, but I'm going to go with the White Oak. I, I, it's going to be, it's going to 
Just make love to me. That's just, yeah. That's that's how you it. know it's love. It's just love. You keep going I'm back like, to it. I just keep coming back for more. When you let it go and it and it comes back to you. <laughs> it's it's you beer. It's love. Yeah. It's beer love. Open your heart to love. <laughs> Hashtag beer love. <laughs> Hashtag alcoholism. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag reality. <laughs> This is definitely my favorite beer that we have. I I can't get enough of it. It's it's yeah, it's that pineapple, that tropical flavor from the hops, mixed with the vanilla and like slight coconut that I get from the the wood, and it's just it's beautiful. It reminds me um, the last episode when we were talking with Greg about the different IPAs and how IPAs were huge in craft beer. and I mean, they still are, of course. It's just that other styles are becoming popular as well. But the differences of the IPAs, you have the West Coast and East Coast. And then we were talking about the Northeast, or the, the New England IPA, mm-hmm. like what they're doing in Vermont, a lot of those breweries. And this is reminiscent of that. It's, it's a cloudy brew, a lot of citrus. You got that fruit there. It's not, it, it isn't a New England beer, but it seems like a Buffalo Ode to a New England beer. A New England IPA, I should say. That's the great thing about what's going on with IPAs, I think, right now. The fact that the the growth of just different hop varieties, of what's coming out experimental-wise, like, some of these hop varieties don't even have an actual name. They're just numbered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, it's like, the, uh... all right, this is a mutant, <laughs> mutant genetic gene of some hop we finally figured out how to make. And we're going to throw it into a beer. All right. See, quick nerd moment. It reminds me of the Borg on Star Trek. They all had yeah. numbers. They didn't have names. No names. But what you can do, you don't know if it's going to be piney, citrusy, tropical, woody. You know, it. so no longer is it, you know, East Coast, West Coast. Everybody, if you're, I mean, I think the biggest brewing spot now that's booming is North Carolina. And, you well, know, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of brewers. There's a lot of brewers going to North Carolina. And it's just because of the water and the distribution and it's just like well you're gonna have to get hops to there somehow so well someone's gonna come up with that you know vermont west coast ipa and it's gonna be really freaking good so it's just gonna keep getting better so if buffalo produces one i will gladly accept it (laughs) the buff the buffalo style ipa north coast ipa there you go they're calling it what are they calling it new hampshire or Mm. or Good question. <laughs> Greg mentioned it. Well, yeah, he was referring to the New England IPA New style. England IPA. And that was all about um, the, the juice bombs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, right. Which this, it, it's not a juice bomb, but, and as I was saying earlier, it seems like a tribute to those beers because of that citrus, that coconut flavor, all of that in there. But it's still a bitter IPA, like like a good style IPA, a standard style IPA, I should say. A little bit of bitterness is from the house, but this one... <sighs> yeah. And and most important, well, most important for me at least, very drinkable. Uh, when, when I take a sip, I want another sip. I'm not left thinking <clears throat> that was satisfying, but I'm going to put it aside for a time. I want another sip. Surprisingly, because I think this batch is, a, is slightly oakier than the others... But yes, it's still extremely drinkable. This is what I had for my uh, my shift beer. The other, actually, the past two nights that I worked there, because <laughs> it's that good. Well, the thing is, with this beer, this beer is not always on tap. Mm-mm. It's you know I've come in there, I'm like but no way, no. And the other day I was actually in there, and they're like, oh no, it kicked. It just kicked. I was like, no, no, that, that's what I want. <laughs> and like, well, we have you know. I don't know how many top patches. We have the, the regular Borderland. <laughs> I want the Borderland or the Enforcer. I want the White Oak. You want me to drink that plebeian bullshit? <laughs> well, how about, you know, the, the Bohemian Pussy? Do I look Bohemian to you? <laughs> well, kind of. <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> what are you trying to say, Chris? <laughs> Actually, as far as favorites go, <laughs> this one is really don't good. Don't you ignore me? <laughs> This one is really good. Um, but I've been on a red ale kick recently, and that red jacket more. that they have, that's that's a great it, it, it's a great red style ale. So I'd no, say my favorite is. right now is the red jacket, just because I'm really into uh, red ales right now. Pink. But 
before that came out, because it is more recent, uh, my favorite was was the Borderland, and this is still a close second. But but that red jacket, it, it gets everything I want from Red Out. It has that that malt character, that sweetness, but it still has a lot of uh, flavor backbone going on. Yeah, it's um, being as fresh as it is. I think the hop character is very. Uh, I think that helps too. Yeah, 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 it's it's really there. Yeah, but I think. Um, I don't know. I think a couple more weeks that it's on tap, I think it's going to condition and yeah. that hop character is going to die off a little bit and you're going to get a lot more of the malt character. That's right. And really when beautiful. it mellows out, I'm sure I'll still like it, but it might go to second place with the Borderland because I do like the the strong hop character on the Red Ale. I don't know what my favorite, my second favorite beer on that list is. Mine was the Belgian Double that we had. You know what? I gotta say it. And you're gonna, you might, no, yeah. I gotta go with their newest one. I gotta go with that session I had the other day. That was, it was just one of the test batches, and that was one of my favorites. See, I wasn't a and huge fan of the session. Right. Oh, that, that, well, no, no, I should say that. I did, I did like it. It was a good beer. I, I appreciated it, and I would drink a bunch of it during the summer, of course, as session beers are meant to be drank. But at the end. Uh, it left too much bitterness in my mouth. Had some bitterness. So, I would like more. It's citrus. a good flavor. It, good. I, I would like more citrus too. But at the end, it just with a session beer, you're meant to drink a lot of it, obviously, with the low ABV, and normally you can. But at the end, I just wasn't ready for another sip. I still had that bitterness in my mouth that I get from a big sipping style IPA, well, not a session IPA. Right. Well, Even I, like this, like this leaves you wanting another sip. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What I find out about that at their session. IPA though at 42 is the fact that they're pushing that limit at least to me in terms of session at 4.8 I'm like just, just yeah. they're on the cusp just the cusp for a session I was like okay it's like, still technically sessionable I've seen, it's yeah. sessionable I was like but you're right there you're, you're just right there but I'll keep drinking you because you're delicious it's it's within the legal limit um but I'll say after that, yeah, the red. I'll agree well, with you, Chris, on that. That the red yeah. is probably, you know. Technically, definitely. session IPA is not a BJCP style yet. Ooh. <laughs> so there are no technical parameters so, okay. for the beer for that I'm style. Glad he follow up, up. Follow up. There's no letter to the law, but there's still a spirit to the law. The it's spirit true. of the law is five percent amongst right. brewers. Yes. Which, yeah. which again, they're still under. They're, but but they're flirting with the border, I, I, which like, which well, I, I mean I like I, I like a risque brewer personally. So. I'm glad that <laughs> so good Alex for that. brought the I forgot how you put it the the BJCP guidelines. the law yeah I, I I think the law needs to change a little bit. Well, the law just changed in 2015 yeah. with brand new style guidelines, yeah, which is why problem. we have. Six different specialty IPAs, like the How IPA. How many different categories are there? Did they add new categories? They actually added them? a specialty IPA category <sighs> that consists of, I believe, six different IPAs. Okay, styles. gentlemen, gentlemen, red IPAs, black IPAs. See, ge- gentlemen, before we go on, let's pour our next beer because we have one more we can talk about. Uh, I, I know Dan. Dan is a bee in his bonnet here about these BGC. <laughs> BJCP guidelines, but uh, let's pour our next beer and then we'll uh, we'll talk about these. All right, cool. So we just poured our next beer here, and this is the one that we mentioned earlier from Forty Two North, which I've yes, never had before. It's in communism. Yes, <laughs> Dan's never had before, but reminds him vehemently of communism. Wait, have you had it? I've never had it. No, oh. no, 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 no. I've never had it. You never had it. Alex has had it before. I've had. And, Three bottles of it. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> and he was gracious enough to share a bottle for this episode. Yet he uh, still took most of it. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're talking about the Red Army. The, uh, the Sorry, re- man. <laughs> it's that good. It's a Russian Imperial Stout. Greece, Huge, of course, bitch. being a Russian Come Imperial Stout. Buy a bottle. That's 12.5%. Uh, <laughs> Told I said I would. It, I mean, yeah, after the show, let's, let's, let's go buy a bottle. But uh, anyway, anyway. So we're drinking the Red Army now. We'll be talking about that a little bit later. But I interrupted Dan. Dan or Alex was talking about the uh, the BJCP guidelines, specifically IPAs, but it could have been any of them, really. Just how they were redone in 2015. So Dan, you had something to say about the BJCP guidelines. 
he had uh, Alex had mentioned the notion uh, that they just changed the guidelines in 2015, mm -hmm. and they had brought in the category specialty IPAs. Um, we were out just before the podcast, and I had said it, the thought had crossed my mind that rather than adding categories, and I've uh, Alex, you've competed, um, you've been a judge as well. I've competed, and I've read those guidelines in the different categories. <laughs> that at the notion of where we're at a point almost where when it comes to pilsners, lagers, ales, it's almost gotten to me where I feel like we've got to simplify it. <laughs> Don't keep adding categories, but pull it back to the, I'm like... Now, but do I think, think that there's I think that there's a trend that people are trying to do consistently trying to do new things and expand upon a category, which is why we have a category of specialty IPA which includes red IPAs, which can which can have like a toasty but kind of like toffee you note. You can have white IPAs, you can have black IPAs, you can have so many different kinds, and when it comes down to it the BJCP is mostly for judging these beers. It's categorizing a specific beer style into something that people can judge objectively and not subjectively. That's what it comes down to. I still disagree. Well, there is I want to room. condense. I want to condense. There's room to disagree in the in the fact for me at least that it's it can be very subjective. Cuz I when I competed it was very hard. I was like, "All right, well this is what I'm going for." Um but then talking to other people I was like, "Well, you may have been going for this, but what does it taste like? What does it taste like? Because you want to throw it into <laughs> that category. It's like, no. if you want to win. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, but that's... Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm like, but this is what I went to brew. It's like, does it matter? This is what it tastes like. You will win that category. I'm like... One of your homebrews that we tasted, though... Okay, I, true. <laughs> did you submit that one? I don't... You were, I? you were going for a double IPA, an Imperial IPA. And, and Alex came across and goes... Damn, this is a good barley one. I was yeah. like, it was double yeah. IPA. It's like, this ain't a double IPA. <laughs> he, he tasted it. His, his, his words verbatim were, this, sir, is an American-style barley wine. <laughs> and a damn good one. <laughs> I was like, okay then. <laughs> so that's that's jumping a whole category. But but that's where it comes down to the fact that, like, yes, to me it tasted like a really good American-style barley wine. You were going for Imperial IPA. So, what you do when it comes to competition time is enter it into both categories. Mm. That way, you see oh, that how it's ah. how it actually scores as a double IPA and how it scores as an American barley wine. And you tune your recipe up based off of that. Be my coach, Alex. Be my Yoda. Are there? Where's, where's my whistle? <laughs> I need a whistle. <laughs> You need a whistle and a locker room full of meat that he can punch. I was gonna go keg stand. Oh yeah, that I suppose that is more relevant to our current. What is endeavor. this? What does this have some to do with brewing? Over there. Absolutely nothing. I just want to see how long you can go for on a keg stand. <laughs> this is to keep me interested. <laughs> this ain't about you. That's actually a good point. Are there? I mean, there's obviously there's beer com a lot of beer competitions, and they're just becoming more popular as beer becomes more popular. But are there any kind of beer coaches or beer consultants or not? Is it mostly just personal, you know, what you're doing at home, what you're home brewing? Obviously, there's just a plethora of resources online that you can go to. So I don't know if you would need that, but it seems like there might be a bit of a market for a professional beer consultant. You know, there could be, but at the same time, I think there's so much, there is so much information out online, whether it's good or bad because I've read some forums that were absolutely horrible and I think it comes down to getting opinions of people who know beer not just your friends and family because if you give any friends and family you know your any of your beer obviously they're going to be more prone to say oh this tastes really good and it might not be their thing, but like they'll have a glass of it just to appease you, but then they move on to something else. Very true. 
when it comes to I mean, when my beers really started getting pretty good was when I actually joined the Sultans of Swig Homebrew Club because I had an opportunity to bring my beer oh, to that's a good point. So it's people who knew beer, yeah, people who judge yeah. beer. And, and they'll tear us down. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And they'll give me their 100% honest opinion. Mm-hmm. So right now, it's to, and this is perhaps because it is such a burgeoning craft. It's not at all established, having to rebuild itself in the 20th century. But it, it, So that would act as kind of a group of pure consultants. Right. It's not like it's, it's that degree yet where you, it, well, you still get that kind of camaraderie in beer. And that'll that actually as as craft beer becomes more popular, that'll be interesting to watch. If that kind of camaraderie, which is just so prevalent in the industry, continues, or whether it becomes more competitive, and you know, as the market does become saturated, which it's nowhere near saturated right now, but when it does, and but you're you have less of, opportunity for breweries to open up, if you're there'll be a lot more competition. Of cool things that are coming out, and the reason it was brought up is because we we're I was drinking Jack's Abbey, which is possibly one of my favorite breweries right now. And it's all lagers. And the thing I've been drinking the most is that excess. And it's a Indian pale lager. You give that to someone, they're not going to think a lager. At least not an American standard lager, because, well, that's a German lager. And when I think German lager, I don't think of the most flavorful beers on the planet. Right. Um, but uh, it, it just changes it. I mean, when we did the last episode, we had uh, Jack Sabby on there. It was the... Uh, Red Rye. Yeah. That yeah, was yeah. good. And that was really, was really good. good. And uh, I just had the Super Fresh. Uh, that's a Pilsner. Dry Hop Pilsner. You give someone that beer, it's not Pilsner to them. It's an IPA. And I'm just, I'm like, it says Pilsner. I'm like, there's your category. It's not what I'm thinking. It's changing the game up. <laughs> so I'm starting to get to the point where I'm like, those guidelines... Oh, eventually, at some point. Well, but those guidelines are going to be very skewed. You're not. You're not wrong. To, to Alex's point, those competitions are for that kind of deviations. It is more academic. Mm-hmm. But from a marketing standpoint, and this, I, I'm reminded of Greg, who we had on last week, who works at Aurora Brew Works. Um, he'll often write more of his interpretation of a beer. So he'll put a beer on the chalk. They have a chalkboard there for those who haven't gone. If you haven't gone. And you live in Western New York, go to Aurora Brew Works. But anyway, they have a chalkboard and they have the beer and the beer style. And if it's a very specific style, if it's a it's a, it's a red red IPA, red imperial IPA, something like that. He might just write like red ale. And to a lot of people, they'll see red imperial. They'll see the exact category it would be in something like the BJCP, and they might turn be, turn away from it. They see what he writes up there, a red L, and they'll give it a chance and they'll actually like it. So to your point, it does make more sense from a marketing standpoint, I think, to just kind of collapse categories. Don't be so precise. Maybe put in the fine print on the bottle for the beer lovers who, who drink it. But for those competitions, yeah, especially as the, as the, the uh, everything opens up and more styles are discovered or rediscovered in some cases. I guess. I, I, or, I, I, would, or, like those... I would like a simple competition. I'd like a not in that, no. Let me scratch that. I would not even a competition. I would just like think of in terms of comic books grading. Just here's my beer. I'm gonna send it to you. Taste it. Tell me what you think. Have like you know three people just taste it right off the bat. Send me back your feedback. There it is. Done. I'm not trying to compete against the other guy. It has nothing to do with him. I just want to know what you think, and I don't. And I don't know you. I'm not looking you in the eye because when I first started brewing, the first beer I did, not a fan. But I had people tell me it was good, and I was like, and in my head, I'm like, I know this isn't good. Don't tell me it's good. All right, I'm scrapping this. Screw it. The first beer that I actually produced that I was actually a fan of, I was like, that's when I decided. I was like, yeah, well, I need something to give back I was like because if I take my friends and family like you said I'm going to get a false read on really what's going on because they want to encourage me to keep going so that's what I was like you know I'm going to throw this into a competition and see what I get out of it I got a 30 out of 50 and I was like alright I got some things to work on good but you know we're not 
I'm not winning anything here. And I never expected to win. And I'm just like, but I just needed something straightforward. And Although, to, to that, well, first, comic book judge, like, that can be very pedantic, especially with those official grades. But to your point about judging, first of all, I, I think of, like, ratebeer.com or stuff like that where it's just an overall score that kind of approaches that and then I also thought of a competition that Alex was in Rape beer not for too homebrew? recently not well we're rape beer for homebrew but the competition that Alex was in at Resurgence where you guys actually won there were different styles there but it wasn't like what's the best it was um, choice yeah well, what's the best tropical flavored IPA here <laughs> it was what's exactly. the best beer here and vote for it yeah what is the popular choice yeah what what, what would you drink if you had to come in yeah. here and drink yeah. this beer and you guys want what beer would you drink yeah so so something like that more local style competitions like that yeah I mean the, the, those are fun no. Especially, especially if you get to go drink it. No, I say yeah, no. Of course. I, I, I say especially no. when you're only paying twenty bucks <laughs> and you get to go around and drink a whole. I bunch was not of upset beers. at that. Exactly. That day. It's a gr- it's a great day. <laughs> it's a great day. I say no. I say we ixnay that. I say we make a rape beer for homebrewers, and I think it starts right here on our podcast. I want every homebrewer to send a bottle of their beer to us. You don't know me. <laughs> I'll drink it. I'll tell you what I'll think. I'll grade it myself, and I'll send you back the feedback. This doesn't I sound agree. like rate beer for homebrewers. It sounds like Dan rates your beer for homebrewers. <laughs> you can join in, too. I'm saying you send your beer here. Yeah, we'll join in. Okay, okay. we'll join in. It's a 12-ounce guys. bottle. It's, a, it's four ounces a piece. We're good. Exactly. Your, your brain on hops rates your beer. <laughs> I like it. That, this is your actually brain genius. on hops I... rapes your beer. <laughs> That's... Way to go dark, Alex. Way to go dark. Uh, I that was we'll, a dark one. <laughs> we'll, say, we'll say nice things about it, too. If it's good. <laughs> if, it's, if it's good. <laughs> All right. Coming. Speaking. Of, <laughs> We're just coming up. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> Where's the segue, that's, Chris? That's the segue. This is a possible thing you'll see from our site in the future. A definite thing you'll see from our podcast in the future is t-shirts. Yes. We are oh, looking... Yeah. yeah, yeah. We want to put out t-shirts. I've been um, excited about this one. Our beautiful logo, made by our own Dan, uh, is is gorgeous, and we want to put it on a t-shirt. And possibly have other t-shirts in the future, but um, look forward to it uh, later in May. And we'll have more details on our next episode. We'll be able to release it to you guys. But uh, it's going to be on some website. We're going to put it out there. It's going to be a gorgeous design. It's going to be the best design you ever you ever saw. Uh, the best. It's going to be the best design. Let's uh, let's. I've make... got the best words to describe this T-shirt. <laughs> let's make beer great again. Yes, let's make beer great again. Wait, no, wait, no, hold on. It was always great. We could. It will stay great because we are the best in beer. <laughs> there you go, Dan. There you go. Well said. So uh, in the in the future, look forward to your brain on hops T-shirts. Absolutely. Uh, and with that, we come to the end of our episode for today. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And as always, feel free to visit us on our website, yourbrainonhops.com. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook, Your Brain on Hops. And then we're on Twitter and Instagram at Brain on Hops. Um, definitely a few things were mentioned this episode for uh, for photos to see, especially uh, that nice head on the milk. So, <laughs> so <laughs> check out <laughs> and Dan's messes. So definitely make sure to check out the Instagram going forward. <laughs> I'm just gonna start throwing crap everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. May the fourth be with you.